Good evening, everyone. <clears throat> I'm sorry I meant to do this particular video yesterday, but yesterday was like one of the busiest days of my life. So today is not that day. And so I um, am able to, to do this. And I'm, I love talking about one of my favorite saints, uh, Saint Maximilian Colby. So currently doing uh, a little video series on this book. Making my way through it, 33 Days to Morning Glory, the preparation for the total consecration to Mary, to Jesus through Mary, and uh, the way that, that Jesus longs for us to approach him. Right? So at the cross, he entrusted us to the Blessed Mother, that said, he looked at the disciple whom he loved, and he said, behold your mother. And have we heard that personally as disciples? Do we really have that personal relationship with our mother? And I think that's the, that's the whole movement of this Marian consecration thing. And uh, this book is great. And uh, in week two, he talks about the, the teaching about Mary from St. Maximilian Colby. Now, St. Maximilian Colby is a big deal. He's a big deal because the popes said he's a big deal. All right, so Pope Paul VI, uh, now blessed, going to be canonized as a saint very soon, said that St. Maximilian Kolbe, uh, that his teachings about Mary, the mother of Jesus, that his teachings were, were clear, were clairvoyant. Um, and this was couched within his, uh, the Pope's homily about, Maximilian Kolbe during his beatification. All right, so he was talking about the teachings of Maximilian about Mary. And he said, you know, what Maximilian says, it's clear, it's safe. It's, it is, this is the church's understanding of Mary's role in her life. John Paul II, maybe you've heard of him. Uh, Pope St. John Paul II said that Maximilian Kolbe was the patron saint of the 20th century. It's a big deal. Uh, he called him the prophet of the civilization of love. Um, and if you don't know much about Maximilian Kolbe, you owe it to yourself maybe to read a good biography uh, about him or, or even just to read um, some something on some website. Um, but here, this quick little synopsis about his life. And it, and it talks about in this book, week two, um, Maximilian Kolbe was born Raymond Kolbe uh, to his parents, and uh, he was a good boy. They were raised in Poland, a uh, good Catholic family. And um, one day, Raymond was just frustrating his mother. And in exasperation, she said, what will become of you? And that, like, shook little Maximilian to the core. And uh, he, he, like went away from that and he was praying before a statue of Mary. Remember, this is when he's still a boy. And uh, he said, what will become of me, blessed mother? And he had a vision of Mary and she appeared to him and she was holding out two crowns. One was white and one was red. And the white crown represented uh, purity purity of heart, um, purity of intention, purity of life, uh, virginity, chastity. And the red one represented martyrdom. And Mary asked him, which crown do you choose? And he said, I choose both. And she vanished. And from that experience, uh, Maximilian, uh, or Raymond, um, eventually joined the seminary and became a Franciscan priest and took the name Brother Maximilian and then was ordained a priest and was Father Maximilian. Now, Maximilian means the greatest, the greatest, because he wanted to be a great saint. Now, you might think, oh, that's, that's not very humble. Like, why would you want to be the greatest? Why would you want to be great? Aren't we supposed to be Christians and be little and uh, humble? 
So Maximilian Kolbe understood that true humility was taking God at his word, right? And, and letting Jesus have his way. Right? And God loves to do great things with little ones. And Maximilian knew how very, very little he was. And so he was very, very bold. And uh, he entrusted his whole vocation, his whole life, right into the hands of the Blessed Mother Mary, right? Just an imitation of, of Jesus. That's what Jesus did. He entrusted his whole life into the hands of Mary Immaculate. And for 30 years, Jesus was obedient to her and loving of her. And in fact, won more glory for God in doing that, in being obedient to Mary, than if he had been out doing miracles and converting the world. Now, mystery of mysteries. Wow. God was glorified more greatly by Jesus' obedience to Mary than if he had been out doing miracles. <laughs> I think God really wants us to honor the commandments. But Jesus shows us how, right? He does it perfectly. Honor your father and mother. He did it. And so Maximilian wants to be a great saint. And he says, Jesus, I want to follow you. I want to be a great saint. How can I do it? And Jesus says, behold your mother. So he entrusts his whole life into the care and intercession of Blessed Mother Mary. And Maximilian continues his striving to be great, to be the greatest. And uh, he encounters Freemasonry in Rome one day, like bold, like blasphemous, you know, like demonstrations right in front of the Vatican. And he was just struck with this inspiration, like we must do something about this. Like we can't let this go on. We have to defend the honor of God and we have to do it in the best way possible. We have to do it in the in the, in the most efficient way possible. And, and we have to change and convert the world as soon as possible. And the inspiration he received was that that means to do it through Mary. Right? So God came to us through Mary. And so we must bring humanity to God through Mary. Right? So Mary just brings us right to Jesus, and that's her vocation. And she loves to do it. And we so very infrequently let her do it. You know, she says to us, would you let me be my, would you let me be your mother? Would you just let me be your mother? So Maximilian starts this community called the Militia Immaculata. The Militia of the Immaculate. And they were this spiritual community that sought to live a radical life of commitment to Christ in a particular way. What Colby would say in the, the safest way, in the quickest way, in the best way, in the surest way, to live all for Jesus by being all for Mary, totally at her disposal, totally at her beck and call, right? To be mama's boys and mama's girls, little children, so he starts the Militia Immaculata. But he is such a, a charismatic personality, such a holy man, he, he founds uh, an, an entire uh, monastery or friary of Franciscan friars. And at one point, they actually become the largest uh, religious community like in the world. They had like 600 friars living in one building. Pretty big deal. Uh, he also had the largest... Um, uh, publication in circulation at the time during World War II. It was something like over a million uh, copies regularly of his um, uh, public, like it was like a magazine or publication on Mary, on devotion to Mary, right? So that was not liked by the Nazis, okay? Um, and he was very outspoken against anything to do with um, evil or anti-Semitism or any of that, right? But he was a powerful voice, right? But the problem was that his powerful voice was totally given over to Mary Immaculate. And so he was her mouth, uh, her, 
her her um, mouthpiece. He was a prophet on the Lord's behalf, and the Nazis certainly were not. And so they had to take him out. And so they came one day, and they arrested him. And his brothers tried to convince him not to, and they said, no, run away, and we can continue our work for the Immaculate. And Colby said, brothers, I appreciate your intention of love, but this is what I must do. I must give my all for Mary Immaculate, for Jesus. And so they came and they arrested Maximilian Kolbe and they brought him to Auschwitz. And he was such a light to the other prisoners. And he was often encouraging them and singing songs with them and sharing the gospel with them. And as a priest, he was hearing their confessions. And sometimes they would be able to sneak in a little bread and a little wine, and he would be able to offer mass uh, for, for the other inmates who, who were Catholic, but certainly others would, would join in, in prayer, right? Um, until one day, a prisoner escaped. And the commandant, in order to show his uh, his authority that he would not be messed with. He lined up all the prisoners in the camp. He made them stand in the hot sun for hours and hours until someone confessed who left, and uh, no one did because they 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 didn't. Not that who um, not that who left because they knew who left, but. Um, how he got out and he wanted to set an example right <clears throat> so after a while he decides well i'm going to select i think it was something like 10 random people um, and they're all going to be killed to send the message that if you try to leave like this other guy did you're going to be responsible for the deaths of other people now so Commandant is walking up and you, 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 eight, nine, and he gets to number 10. And the man's name was uh, Fran Franciszek Gajanovic. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Francis. He was a married man with children, Polish. And he cries out this desperate plea. No, please. I have a, I have a wife. I have children. And he's crying and just, begging the commandant, no, no. And um, they're fall the, his pleas are falling on deaf ears, but Maximilian does something uh, that could have gotten him shot right there. He breaks rank and he steps forward right in front of the commandant and says, um, the commandant says, the commandant didn't shoot him, but he said, who are you? And Maximilian Colby just says, I am a Catholic priest. I will take his place. Now, why the commandant didn't just shoot Colby and the other guy, we don't know. But he actually took him up on the offer, and the exchange was made, and, and Franciszek was put back in rank, and Colby was given his spot to die. And so they were thrown into a starvation bunker, and days and days and days of starvation and pain and torture. And the whole time, Maximilian was singing and glorifying God and praying rosaries and praying with the other inmates and, and smiling. And, and, and his smile was so intense and radiant and beautiful that when he would smile at the guards, they would tell him, stop smiling at us. What is wrong with you? You're going to die. And his joy was inconquerable. Unconquerable. You know the word. He couldn't be beaten. Why? Because he had God's secret weapon on his side. He had God's mother, the mother of Jesus. And so, having already obtained the, the white crown of purity of heart and chastity. Now Colby was able to be crowned with the red crown of martyrdom. 
but he was so joyful at being able to give his life for God. And he did it in the most powerful way. He did it in the way that Jesus died for us. Right? Like Colby died for a stranger. And Jesus, he died for sinners. There's a scripture where Paul says, God, in, in this, God proves his love for us. And that while we were still dead in our trespasses, Christ died for us. You know, it's not enough just to love your friends. Anybody can do that. It's quite another thing to love your enemy and then to die for someone you don't even know, right? So that's why John Paul II called him the prophet of the civilization of love and a patron for the 20th century, that very difficult century, with many wars and heartache. But Maximilian Kolbe was able to do that and give his life for another child of God in honor of Mary Immaculate and for the glory of, of God because he had committed himself to an ideal. And in this book, it talks about how he had always had this dream of committing his whole life to a singular idea and when he founded the Militia Immaculata, he realized, ah, this is my idea. And it's not just an idea, but it's a person. It's Jesus. And I'm going to give my whole life to him in the way that he most desires and is most pleased with. I'm going to give him my life through Mary. Now, what's up with Colby's Mariology or his theology about Mary. He had some super cool things to say, very powerful. You know, the day before he was taken to Auschwitz, he uh, received an answer that he had been struggling with for years and years and years and pondering, wondering. And he would always ask Mary, who are you, O Immaculata? Who are you, O Immaculate One? And uh, when Mary appeared in, in Lourdes, France, maybe you've heard of Our Lady of Lourdes and you've heard of the miracles uh, that, can hap that have happened there and that still continue to happen there when people attend um, services or, or go to bathe in, in the, the springs. Um, Mary revealed herself to St. Bernadette as the Immaculate Conception. Okay, And Colby would wonder, <laughs> What does that mean? Like, I, we know that you, that she is the, she's immaculately conceived. She was conceived without sin and how appropriate that the, the mother of Jesus would be preserved from all sin. You know, I think if you could create your own mother, I think you would probably do that too. No, I would. Wouldn't want the devil to have a single finger on my mom. But it's appropriate, right? Because Mary's the new Eve and Jesus is the new Adam. And she reveals herself, the new Eve, as the, the immaculate conception. What is that? What? And he always wondered, why is that her name? Why does she call her name the immaculate conception? And he pondered and pondered and he wondered. This must indicate something about her identity. And then it came to him. So he wrote an essay the day before he was arrested. And in the essay, he discusses how Mary is the created, immaculate conception. But the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity, is the uncreated, immaculate conception. Now, Mary was created in view of being the mother of the second person of the Trinity, Jesus, right? The mother of God. And so the uncreated, immaculate conception, the Holy Spirit, was so present in Mary from the very instant of her conception 
that it was it was like the two of them were just one right now that's not to say that that the holy spirit is is incarnate in mary that's not what the church teaches but their union the union between mary and the holy spirit saint maximilian said that it, it's 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 so intense that the analogy of a marriage that it's not strong enough like the holy spirit has so fully possessed the immaculate mary you know that it's when you look at her this this human person you see the holy spirit in her if we have eyes to see and i think jesus wants to give us those eyes to see and his word makes it possible because he doesn't command the impossible but he empowers us when he speaks to us and at the cross what does he say use your eyes behold your mother behold look look at who she is and colby was so taken with this idea of the holy spirit being the uncreated immaculate conception he wrote this essay and um and for him his life's theological work was complete and uh, theologians have been pondering this insight since and the pope said yep good stuff approved stamp uh made him a saint so why was he so taken by this woman maybe the better question is why aren't we i think colby was so taken by this woman mary because he saw who she was See, I don't think it's possible to to see and understand who Mary is and to not just be totally taken just have your heart captured by the beauty of this this woman this perfect of all creatures right? same with her son it's not possible to really see the glory of the incarnate god and to not just be captivated by him i mean sinners just flocked to jesus because they they knew he sees me and he still wants me and i think jesus gave his mother to us because he knows that we desperately need a mother so the invitation to you and to me is behold your mother and ask saint maximilian colby for his intercession to help you and all of us to share in this vision of his of the immaculate who are you o oh immaculata who are you, Immaculate Conception? And I think the the secret is revealed in Scripture. The secret is revealed in the tradition of the Church. The secret is revealed in the lives of the saints. You're going to be hard pressed to find a single saint, especially in the last several centuries, who didn't pray the Rosary every day and who didn't have an intense, radical <laughs> devotion and relationship to Mary. I mean, some saints, they even go so far as to say, like, it's not possible. You can't do it without her. Why? Because she's part of the package. She's part of the full gospel, you know. And if Jesus wants her in my life, then I want her in my life, too.
right? She teaches me about Jesus. She shows me Jesus. She helps me to be like Jesus. She's always pointing me to Jesus. Everything about her screams Jesus. How could you not want this woman in your life? So that was Maximilian Kolbe's take. He wanted to convert the world as soon as possible. And he would repeat that as soon as possible. As soon as possible, as soon as possible. So how do we do that? Well, we just do what Jesus did. Just go to Mary. Jesus' goal was to get to us. So he went to Mary. And she bore him to the world for us. And our goal is to get to Jesus. So let's go to Mary. And then she's just going to say, do whatever he tells you. And she's going to teach us how to listen to what it is that he's telling us. So if this video was helpful for you, maybe you consider sharing it. But uh, Maximilian Colby, he's a big deal. He died on the eve of the assumption of Mary into heaven, thus fulfilling his greatest desire of dying in her honor for the Lord Jesus. He prophesied that earlier in his life that he just he wanted to belong and give everything so completely to Mary that the very ashes of his body would be scattered to the four winds, to the corners of the earth. And after the other inmates died, they needed the space of his starvation bunker, and so they injected him with a lethal injection, carbolic acid, and he died peacefully, smiling. And they burned his body. And the ashes were thrown to the four winds. What will you spend your life for? Who will you spend your life for? Who do you belong to? Let's imitate Jesus. Let's belong to Mary. Let's live for the Father so that we too can be scattered to the four winds in love, in building a civilization of love. Peace.